So, I was born with water on the brain. Okay, so, I was not actually born with water on the brain, that would be stupid. I was born in too much spinal fluid or brain grease, whatever you want it. Uh, so, I have a strange shape and my brain looks like a giant french fry. And the, the, I know it may sound funny putting in that words, but trust me, it wasn't funny back then. I had to make a surgery to remove the extra grease and I have a lot of problems since there. Some of them really stupid, like I have 42 teeth, which I have to remove it only one day, 10 of them. So, a four years old kid. And uh, I, have, I have big hands and big foot, it's quite strange. Also, I, have, I used to have big skull, what makes people call me stupid names, like Orbit and that stuff, whatever. Um, but the worst of all was the seizures. I never had them for a long time. But for a kid it was quite, you know, strange and, uh, you know. Uh, I also think that my personality is one of those that it can be accepted by everyone because everyone calls me retard. And you know what it happens when you're a retard in a reservation school? You're beat up at least once in a month. So that's why I used to stay home and read books or draw. I used to draw because Drawing is a new language, uh, words are too limited, and uh, you know, drawing is a new universe. So, today was the first day in Raider School. It was a long way there, and I was really scared, but my dad was too. So, when I, we got there, he had me. He said we could go back, but I really couldn't see. If I went back to the rest, they would make sure to not let them out anymore alive. Still, he comforted me, saying the white boys weren't better than me, and that I was a warrior for doing this. He loved me so much. <laughs> Still, he lied. And I knew he lied. He was lying. He handed me the lunch money, and after our goodbyes, I left the car. I got there early. The white kids began to arrive. I started to notice that they were even wider than I imagined. You could see the blue veins in their, in their skin. Um, and I was really tall comparing to them, to some of them, like, because some of them actually were huge, like football guys. I also noticed that it was actually not difficult. They were staring at me, and uh, Rudy's goodbye punch in the eye didn't help. They were looking at me like I was some kind of alien. Suddenly, I felt really dislocated, which wasn't surprising. Reardon is the opposite of the rest of my family full of racist kids who have a bright future ahead of them, while me, as an Indian, don't deserve anything. So, there was a really awkward moment before the janitor came and finally opened the door. I didn't enter the school as the other kids. I waited till everyone was inside. After building the courage to go inside, I came across a secretary, Melinda. A pretty sexy secretary, I must say. And she gave me the constitution and moral code of the school and helped me with the classroom. I got there and it was like everyone stopped to look at me, uh, stare at me, stare at heart. The teacher was a really muscular guy named Mr. Grant. And then the highlight of the day, <laughs> I met Penelope, uh, which is probably the most beautiful girl I've seen in person. Of course it was a basic, what's your name, where are you from, conversation, which means I didn't cause a very good impression. So, today was the weirdest fist fight ever in my life. So, there are some rules that we Indians have to follow in fist fights. Like, if somebody insults you, you have to fight him. If you think somebody is going to insult you, then you have to fight him. If you think somebody is thinking and insult you, you have to fight him. If somebody insults any of your family or friends, or if you think they are about to insult any of your family or friends, or if you think they are thinking to insult any of your friends or family, then you have to fight him. You should never pick a fight with a girl unless she insults you or, fa or your family or any of your friends. If somebody beats up your mother or father, then you have to fight the daughter or son of the one that beat up your mother and father. If your mother and father beats up someone 
you know that his son or daughter will about to beat you up. You must always pick fights with the sons and or daughters of any Indians who work for the Bureau or Indians Affairs. You must always pick fights with the sons and or daughters who are white people that live in the rest. If you get a fight with someone who is sure to beat you up, then you must throw the first punch because it will be the only you will have, you will get to throw. In any fight, the loser is the first one who cries, and that's it. So I was living my life by those rules. I got in my first fist fight when I was three, and I've been in dozens since then. Uh, I have a nice record, actually five wins and 112 losses. So yeah, I was the worst. Once I lost with a girl half of my age. Once I lost with myself because a bully made me beat myself. So now you know the rules. Let me tell you the story about that huge guys in the school that are always calling me names. And um, they actually never punch me. I'm really scared about them, but they never punch me. Uh, they may be also scared about me because, well, I'm an Indian and they may think I'm a potential killer. But one day, at the lunch, uh, Roger, that huge guy, came with a joke that was kind of like this. Oh, you know that Indians are living proof that niggers fuck buffalo? <sighs> really funny, isn't it? Obviously, I got pretty offended and suddenly I punched Roger in the face. They were like, scary, you know? It seemed like they were offended or their little feelings were hurt. And I said Roger to come after school, uh, but I was crazy. <laughs> and he said I was crazy. I followed the rules of fighting, I didn't know what was happening, but apparently they don't have any rules of fighting. I felt like somebody w has shoved me into a rocket ship and blasted me to a new planet. I was really fr a freak alien and there was absolutely no way to get